Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Raymond, would you open us, please? Lord, we do thank you for this. that you granted us. We're so thankful for our homes and our families. Thank you for the joy of salvation. This opportunity we have to come to your house. Yes, Help Lord. us today, Lord, to lay aside the cares of this life that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. Your name might be lifted up above all names. We pray for Brother Brad as he breaks the bread of life here and preaches to us today, Lord. We Receive into our hearts of what we need to hear from heaven today. We're thankful today we've got a Heavenly Father, Lord. He cares for us, Lord. You gave your life upon the cross and all the call of one you can know why it's cast out. Thank you for that precious blood that you shed for an old sinner like me. I, Lord, that you always watch over us and keep us and call us in your precious word. You make a way when there seemeth no way. Uh, as we meet the challenges of this life, Lord, you told us we have these trials and tribulations in this life. We could be of good cheer. You've overcome those things. We might overcome those. Cast them all our care upon you for your care for us. Thank you for this day. Each home is represented here today. We pray and ask these things and give thanks in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Take your Bible this morning. We're going to go over to, uh, first of all, I want to just read Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Acts chapter 9. Familiar a story in Acts chapter 9. Oh, you did, huh? <laughs> Acts chapter 9, verse 1. And Saul... Yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest. Now I want you to notice who we're talking about here. This is talking about Paul and uh, how the Lord had changed his life miraculous this day. And he desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of those way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there was shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and, and he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Verse 6 says, And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 11, it says, When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. It says, But when I became a man, I put away childish things. We, as we read this, we find a phrase that says, When I became a man, Paul's uh, making uh, this statement. I, I was doing a little reading on some different cultures, what it, the requirements was to become a man. There's a small island in the South Pacific, and I seen this one time on, I don't know, it was on a, some document on TV. They build a scaffolding. I mean crude, just out of the branches and things, and they, they build it up to 100 feet tall. 
Well, they're building this uh, so this, these boys can climb on the very top, tie a rope to their ankles, and jump off. My understanding, they teach that even in their young, when they're little, they five, think five years old will make a small one and jump off. And they, hopefully they make the rope the right length so they don't come crashing to the ground. It's like a bungee jump. All I know is, I wouldn't do it. I'd still be a boy. Amen? Anybody a boy here? And uh, I know I, I, I always startling. I think it was at the nursing home. I went to the, the, the boys there. And, and now they're not necessarily boys. They're gray-haired. They're old. They're, I mean, they, they're old men too. Amen? But I call them boys. And they're always kind of shocked. They say, boys. Now, I, I, I don't know, but I'm still a boy. Anybody still a boy? Amen. Praise the Lord. Over in uh, a place in Hamari, Ethiopia, in order to become a man, you have to jump a herd of cows. And I'm not sure how that all works, but uh, they got to jump on the cows, go through the cows, go all that. In the Amazon, in Brazil, a boy has to take his hand and put inside a glove. Now they tell me inside this glove is a bunch of bullet ants. Now my understanding, this is the bullet ant is one of the most venomous type and the, the, the most uh, painful bite of any ants. They say that uh, one bite will cause a throbbing for 24 hours. And the, this ritual is that you put your hand in there and it's full of these ants. And you are to keep your hand in that glove for 10 minutes without saying anything. I know me, I would fail. So I don't know how many times they're trying to become men. I don't know about you, but it sounds stupid. A stupid man. That's what it sounds like to me. Paul tells, he said, he makes a statement, when I became a man. I'm confident Paul is talking about the day on the Damascus Road where a light shone down from heaven and convicted him and called his name and he got right with God. Fact is, Paul, before this, many looked at him and they thought, well, he's a man. He had bravery. He had courage. He was feared. But Paul says, there was a time I became a man. We've already shared. I know we all got a lot of, some of us men, more, more than others, some of us have a hard time growing up. And I know I got some boy still in me. Amen? Amen. It's hard to believe, but that's, that's not bad. There's some good traits too, okay? But I believe on the B Damascus Road, we find something took place that day. He got humbled. We find in our text here in, in 1 Corinthians, you find this whole chapter uh, we find the chapter before talks about the gifts. The last verse, he said, I want to tell you about something more excellent. There's a more excellent way. And he shares chapter 13, and it's about love. Men, you know a great trait is one where you have love. Fact is, the Bible tells us we need to love one another. Fact is, you know what even supposed to, we're supposed to love our enemy. This is a love that doesn't come just by growing up in this world here. It comes from God. And we find here that I believe when he became a man, you'll find there in the, the last verse of chapter 13, he said, Now abideth faith, hope, and charity. That word's love. He said the greatest of these is charity. To be men, you've got to be a lover. You become a man, you're going to be a lover. 
And you say, that sounds soft, Brother Brad. And you know what? The greatest lover, the greatest one that shows love is Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you what, he wasn't weak. He wasn't how many portray him, amen. You won't find more of a man than Jesus Christ. But he had a love, amen. Well, Paul gives us three things that he put away when he became a man. First thing he talks about, he says he put a, he said, uh, he said, when I was a child, I spake like a child. He said, I put it away. I put this, this child is talking. Now, there's many things about a child, and when I think about it, I had my grandkids over last night. Boy, it's just wonderful, amen. Son-in-laws were there too, that's okay. When they're, uh, <clears throat> they come to Papa, Michael and Reagan, they like to say Papa, they come to me and say Chase. Now, some of you might know what that means. Some of you don't do that, but I do. And so, you know, oh, ain't that cute? Well, in about 10 years, if they're still coming to Papa, and they say, Chase, it's not going to be as cute. I might have to chase them in a walker. I don't know. But the things aren't there. You know, they change. It's not cute now. Or when you, when you get older, you find, you say, I put, that, I put that behind me. There's some things that are cute. And then there's some things, uh, children, they, a lot of times they say it, it's selfish. They say, I want, don't they? I want. It's all about self. It's me first. I want to be first. Sometimes if they don't get their way, they, they call it a tantrum. That's ugly. That's an ugly side in it. We'll find there's some traits. But you know, as, as many traits I thought about, I, <clears throat> my other grandson, Jackson, sometimes he doesn't know, and lots of children are, they just don't know how to express themselves, do they? They just don't know what to say. I was telling someone recently, I, uh, one of my old cars has been sitting for a couple of years, and I, I got in the back seat. I've got a, one of those, I had it when I was a kid, a ventriloquist doll. Okay? It's not a teddy bear. And it sits in the back seat. It's always driving in my old car. Okay? Well, I was with Jackson here a couple of weeks ago, probably about a month ago, and I thought, well, I was kind of watching him, and boy, you've got to keep your eye on him, so I thought I'll just, I was trying to start the car. So I thought I'll put him in the back seat. It's a big back seat back there, and a clear cross over there, and I, it's Johnny, that's the ventriloquist, that's what I named him, Johnny, okay? Well, Jackson, when he doesn't know what to say, and he kind of gets a little scared, he kind of looks at you, and I need to tape record it. But he looked at me, and he started to reach for me, and he goes, Him, him, no, Papa, do that, don't go away. <laughs> I'm serious, that's what he says. <laughs> and I knew. He just don't know what to say. That's how a child is. And you know, I, I thought about old Paul here. Paul said, I got rid of some of that childish talk. Now, when he gets older, Jackson, when he gets married someday, gets a little something, he ain't going to come to his wife and go, hey, but who the hell? <laughs> hey, I, I sure hope he don't. But Paul there on the Damascus Road, he got confronted. And you know what? When you get confronted of a living God, you get speechless. Amen. You don't know what to say. But you know what? That's the child part of us. You know what happened I like about Paul, amen? Something happened in his life. He said, I put away that child in speaking. And you know what he finally said? And this is something that the Lord is trying to get you to say. He said something precious. He called him to heaven and he said, Lord! My 
Tell you what, that's a good thing to say. You know what Paul realized? He grew up that day. He realized, I ain't going to be having that childish speaking anymore. He grew up, he became a man, and he said, Lord. And praise God, I hope you have a Damascus road in your life that one day you looked up and you said, Lord. When you say, Lord, you're saying, I'm getting out of the way. I'm letting you take charge whatever that might be. And I tell you what, he realized that day he was a sinner. He knew it was at a problem and he needed someone to take care of that. He couldn't do it. And he said, Lord. You know, you can about say, I tell you what, you might say, uh, what kind of prayer should you say uh, to get saved? If you mean it from the heart, all you got to say is, Lord. Well, I believe the Lord liked hearing that, didn't he? He put that away. You'll find in Acts chapter 9, if you read on there, he'll tell you what, down get to verse 20. You know what he started doing? His speech changed. Verse 1, he's threatening. Verse 20, he's preaching. You know what happened? He said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. But then I became a man. And praise God, I'm so glad his, his talking, it changed. Amen. You know what he said? I said earlier about kids are, if they don't get their way, they have a little tantrum. Adults do the same thing. Isn't that right? But you know what Paul's terminology then became? Lord, what do you want? Isn't that be a good way to grow up? You just say, Lord, what do you want? I don't care what, you know what I want, but I want what you want. There was a change in, in Paul's life where he said, I became a man. I was on that Damascus road, praise God. Well, he, he goes on and he said, I, when I was a child, I speak like a child, but then he said there was a time I just understood like a child. He said, I understood like a child. You find understanding. You know, a, a child just don't understand a lot of things. I've said that before many times with your child or with a grandchild. Say, well, they just don't understand yet. They just don't understand. A child knows uh, very little about many uh, different things. And uh, a fact is a child, they're understanding. You know, a child will believe anything. I mean, you can tell them that the tooth fairy's coming and they're going to come and they're going to get them some money and you know what? They believe it. They do. I mean, you can just tell a child anything. But you know what? A child is molded when they're young and they grow up and you know what they find out? A lot of those things that aren't true. Now, if you believe in the tooth fairy, I'm sorry, hey, amen. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. Some of those things that are not true sticks with them. You can't get it out of them. Mom and daddy told me, grandma and grandpa told me, someone told me. Paul had those things. He had some understanding that he had since he was a child. In the book of Galatians chapter 2, he makes some statements here. In Galatians, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 11, he said, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, I'm going to tell you, if your gospel come from man, it ain't the right gospel. It says, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous. Now notice he said, zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Now praise God, if you have a godly father or mother, amen, and hopefully they taught you right, but there's a lot of teaching that's not right. And Paul maybe had some sincere parents. He maybe it was, but he had him under the traditions of men. And it was not of God. But, it, but Verse 15, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's room and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with the flesh and blood. See, he said, I didn't get with man. 
Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again into Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and bowed with him fifteen days. But of the other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. You know what I like about uh, Paul? You know, what, you know where he got his doctrine? He got alone with God. Now, I don't understand it, I tell you what, there's folks, there's folks that are not just children, there's folks that are adults, and they have never really got alone with God and found out the truth. We're adults. He's given us a book. He's given us a mind. And I tell you what, I'll say this, don't you do what I do. Don't you do what I say unless you back it up with what he says. How many just are led astray because somebody said, well, I believe them, they're sincere, it must be right. That's childish thinking. He said, I put away that childish thinking, amen. My understanding is now changed, amen. My understanding, it came from, from the Lord, amen. That's what we need. We find, by the way, you don't have to understand everything either. If you're here and you say, well, I've got to have it all figured out, you ain't going to get it all figured out. There's a song here I like, amen. If I could sing, I'd just sing it, but when I'm not going to, amen. It says, farther along. Amen, but I, you know, I like that song. It's got the word understanding in it. It says, tempted and tried, we're often made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long while there are others living about us. Never molested, Though in the wrong, it says, farther along, we'll know all about it. You know, I thought about that. I thought about Brother Chuck. He wants to sing for the Lord. It's hard to understand it, though, isn't it? Why is he getting strokes? But you know what? Farther along. It's not for us to understand, amen. It's not us to, to kind of put the puzzles together, amen. It says in verse uh, 3, faithful until death, said our loving master, a few more days to labor and wait, toils of the road will then seem as nothing as we sweep through the beautiful gate. When we get through that gate, farther along, we'll understand, amen. I like when we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall meet him in the bright mansion. We'll understand it all by and by. You know what Paul said, I don't have to understand it now. I thought I had an understanding, but on the Damascus road, I got a new understanding. Amen. He maybe had the doctor degree. He had the master's degree. He knew everything, but praise God, I like that. I've heard preachers say that he got the B.A. born again degree. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said, I don't have to understand it. I don't know it's in his hands. Amen. Boy, I'm glad. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said, I put away those childish things. The Bible said, lean not under thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Praise the Lord. Well, we find here that he said, I, when I became a man, I put away that, that childish talk. I put away that childish teaching. Amen. And then he said, I put away those childish, childish thoughts. child now there are times they do they like to help and there are some good traits Jesus does tell us that we should become as a little child and there's some wonderful traits that children have but a lot of times a child they think about self and that's right we do and it's hard to get that self out of the way we think about us some of you are wondering if you're going to get a flashlight or a, uh, a pen amen so you've got to hurry up and get back there because you want a flashlight and there's only two left, you know. Some of you are thinking, uh, we don't need candy bars.
a hamburger. I mean, I mean, whatever. I mean, that's just how we are. But do you know what happened there on the Damascus Road? You know what happens? You'll find he put away that childish speaking. He said, Lord, hallelujah. He put, away that, uh, he put away that childish teaching, amen. He says, whatever you have, Lord. But he put away those thoughts. And you know what happened? The Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And I'm going to tell you on the Damascus Road, you'll find that Paul was not the same. Paul didn't get up that day, amen. He said, well, yeah, I got saved yesterday and just keep on going on doing the same old thing. I tell you what, he's, he, he, there was a change in his life. And his thought, it starts in your thoughts. He said, I used to think about ways and things and boy, I tell you why, that was against Christ. But you know what now? He said, I think about my loving Savior. He didn't think about Jesus before. Now he thinks about Jesus. Every day he gets up. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I didn't deserve it. Boy, I tell you, I, he said, I was the chief of sinners. I was the worst of the worst. Amen. I did too much harm to the kingdom of God. But what did he do? He called down there. Amen. And I think I've shared it before. He called and said, Saul, Saul. Amen. I like that. That word Saul means desire. He desired Saul, amen. Change his name to Paul, amen. Maybe Paul changed his name. He's, that Paul, name Paul means little. I'm a nobody, amen. But praise God, called that name, my, my name down on that Damascus road, amen. And there was a day I became, I put away those childish things. And you know what? I became a man. You know what real men do? They have a love for the Savior. Oh, how I love Jesus. How can you not love Jesus? I tell you what, I, you say, well, I don't know. I, you know what? That we, get, we are too proud. You know why we don't love him like we should? We're too proud. We think we deserve something. I don't care who you are here this morning. You don't deserve anything from God. I don't, fact is, you know what? If we got what we deserved, we'd been zapped. Don't stand too close to me. The zapping might come. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. You know, he changes your thoughts. And you know what Paul did immediately? He started to preach. He started to proclaim. You know why? Because he had a love. He got the love of Jesus in him on Damascus Road. And when you got the love of Jesus in you, you're going to love Jesus, amen, like you never thought you could. And then you're also going to love lost souls. I tell you what motivated Paul to keep on going. Here just recently, like I shared about all the things that he went through, and, and he was uh, whipped, he was shipwrecked, he had perils of this and perils of that he went through. You know why? Because a change took place on Damascus Road, became a man. And now he loves souls. I tell you, anybody loves souls? I tell you, what, what's wrong with us, amen? Do we really love souls? If we love souls, you know what? We're going to have a burden uh, for those babies. We're going to have a burden not just for those babies, but the neighbor's babies. We're going to have a burden, amen, for that lost husband, that lost wife, that lost mama, dad, or whatever, whoever it is, that one, that co-worker, amen. If you don't have a burden this morning, there's something wrong, amen, for a lost soul. Paul got that on that Damascus road. He said, that's the day I became a man. I put away those childish things. It's not about me anymore, amen. It's about others. And you know, by the way, amen, praise God, you know, we come here every, we come here every time we gather. I tell you, it's about a lost and dying world. If we start, we get off that focus there, amen, people need Jesus. Paul was about serving him. He loved to serve the Lord. He had a love that took place in his life. Something happened on the Damascus Road. You know what? He just didn't get wet by some baptism, did he? He didn't come and just say some kind of prayer. He got the love of Jesus. He said, let me tell you about something more excellent way. There's a better way. 
Paul had a love to see Jesus. He said, I look for, I'm looking forward to his appearing. Paul got to see him, amen. He didn't see him in the clouds, but amen, he got there. This morning, he said, when I became a man. You know, if I went to each and every one of you, I'd like to hear about your Damascus Road experience. Paul's was real. I hear a lot of folks say, will tell me some sort of experience. Yeah, when I was a kid, I did this and that, that and they don't, they don't know, nothing happened. Maybe it did. But if it did happen, the love of Jesus got in there. And there's something that took place. He put away the, he got a different talk. Got a different understanding. He got a different thought. Do you have that Damascus Road? I don't know. There's only one road. There's only one way. Devil's got a lot of different ways, and he's got a lot of folks convinced that their way was okay. You know what? I'm so glad. When I became a man. By the way, you can become a woman too. Amen? It's for everybody. Let's all stand this morning. Father, I thank you. Lord, maybe we're here and we... As Paul, I, I believe for many times the Lord knocked on his heart and he didn't know what to say. Boy, for a while it's kinda, it was all right, but after a while it got kind of old. And praise the Lord, the Lord loved him enough, had a desire enough for him that he, he knew what it was going to take. And he reached down into his heart. And Paul cried out and he said, Lord. A lot of times people say that, but it's being abused. But when Paul said it, he meant it. And he knew about that day where he matured. When he saw the light, he realized that the one he was rejecting was the one that was saving him. Lord, we thank you. Lord, help us, Lord, in our in our walk, in our talk, in all the areas of our life. Maybe we don't know what to say, or we can just say, Lord, I need you. I need you to take charge. I need you to be first place. I need you on the throne of my life. Maybe we've been listening to tradition, what someone else says. Oh, help us, Lord, to get alone with you we get a better understanding. Lord, we all can grow closer. We can all grow more like you. Help us to be the men and women that you'd want us to be. Father, have your way in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every eye closed, every head bowed this morning. The Lord would call down this morning and call your name. Can you call back up and say, oh, Lord, Lord, is he Lord? Is he King of Kings? Is he on the throne? Is he lifted up into the position he needs to be in our lives? Where is he? Is he there just when we, we need him? We call unto him? Is he there when we just don't know want to make a decision? He needs to be the decision maker. We call you say, Lord, are we burdened for the lost? Oh, help us. Greatest need of anyone in this world is Jesus. We got kids, we got grandkids, we got family, they're all around us, they don't know Jesus. I want them to know about Jesus. I 
I want him to know that he's just not on the outside calling. He wants on the inside.